record. All right, recording is started. Right, so welcome to new week, new Monday. Uh, you guys see a uh, clip to the side of your desk. Uh, you guys just picked up uh, this half page. So this is your guys' um, next quiz. Uh, let's have this do, uh, well, I was going to say Monday coming back from, but um, we don't actually have school uh, next Monday. So let's do Tuesday. So you guys have uh, extra day to do that. So just like normal, be take home, open notes. So quiz is due in a week uh, on Tuesday. Oh. The uh, chapter 16 through 19 uh, homework problems, uh, which are, remember that's uh, these right here. Okay. We've actually done uh, most of these. We just got to do a few more. Uh, I'll go over those in class with you guys. Uh, let's have a due date um, end of this week uh, on Friday, but uh, my plan is to get those finished by end of the uh, day tomorrow. All right, so line up today, uh, we're gonna start with a uh, retinal fatigue activity. Uh, then we're gonna go into, uh, you guys got your phones out? Phones out? Because uh, we're gonna do a Kahoot here in a few minutes. Uh, then uh, I've got some other demos uh, lined up for you guys. That's, uh, well, last class that took till uh, the end of class. So uh, there we go, that's the uh, that's agenda. All right, let's flip the screen over, share screen. All right, so you guys uh, stare at that dot right in the middle, you guys hit that in the middle, okay. and I'll tell you what's uh, going on uh, inside your eye. So one of the things that we've been uh, studying this last week are uh, well, colors, right? We've been doing EM spectrum, optics, uh, and colors is one of those things. Now, uh, you have three different uh, color receptive cones in your eyes, three different kinds. There's a red, green, and blue cone. Uh, unless, of course, you're both colorblind, you might only have uh, a couple of those. Right. Um, and each of those cones are receiving wavelengths uh, in different proportions, and your mind is putting these together and interpreting color. Right. Now, uh, you guys ever say walk into a bakery, it smells like bread, but if you're there a long time, then don't really know the smell anymore. Right. Because uh, your senses get used to whatever's around you, your brain is trying to see what's different, right? Uh, so just looking for differences in your environment. Right, so uh, I'm going to flip the screen here. And when I do, uh, you're going to see the opposite of what colors are there. Okay. Do you guys see a red, white, blue American flag just floating there? Right. Ah, because each of those would be like the uh, complementary colors, right? Of the post of this. Yeah, it might, might only uh, be a little while to fade away. Uh, I'm going to do a few more with you guys. It's hard to do too many because you know, after a while, your eyes like, oh, but okay. wait a few more seconds to, for your vision to set back to normal. Let's try. Are right, you guys ready for the next one? Right, let's try this one here. Uh, This one and the last one you'll notice are pretty basic. I mean, the last one was three colors, this one's four colors. So I tried doing this with uh, some more uh, complicated images, like, like actual photographs. Uh, one of my original ideas was you know, just grab some photographs and just convert them on paint, which is really easy to do. Uh, I found that photographs, it's, uh, this activity doesn't work nearly as well as it does for just very basic color, you know, like simple numbers of colors, like three or four colors, like cartoon and type of images. Here we go, flip this one. That one work too? Yeah, you guys see some optic colors? All right, so scan count off a few seconds, try to give your eyes a chance to get back to normal. Right, we'll do one more. Uh, we'll do the most complicated image I could get to work, uh, sort of. Right, well, see if it works for you guys. Okay. All right, you guys ready for the last one? Okay. And right after this, we'll do a okay. hoot. Okay, last one. Mm -hmm. what, what color is Scooby Doo in the, in the cartoon? Brown. Yeah, brown, right? Huh. Well, how many guys can see a brown Great Dane? Because that should be the color, right? Hmm. Again, so some uh, cartoon like this, there's just a handful of colors, but yeah. 
And three, two, one, flip. That work. This is Scooby Doo. All right, guys, ready for a cut? All right, so these questions, while well, you guys are logging on, a little context. Uh, I like doing cahoots either on a Friday or Monday, either to wrap up the week or to bring back into it, you know, which is what we're doing here. So, you guys remember, of course, last week, uh, we'll cover a bunch of game spectrum optics type materials. You guys see these posters hanging from the ceiling that might help you out with a few of these questions. Uh, there's um, now most of these uh, questions are content that you guys learn. Some of these are critical thinking type questions. So, you can take what you've learned and um, see if you can apply it uh, and, and figure out some things. Uh, there's a couple of questions that are like trivia or things I can uh, go into more detail about, but I want to see if you guys can you know, get these two or uh, my last class, they surprised me on some of these. They're able to uh, figure out some of these. All right, that's about ready to go. Yeah, so thank you so much, everybody, for popping on pretty quick. Oh, yeah, okay. A few more seconds here. Okay. Um, if anybody's uh, having connectivity problems or trying a lot or is it gonna be a minute late, uh, you guys see this seven digit pin. Uh, when I hit start, it should show up at the bottom of the screen. So, or if you get bumped out, you can always hop back in. All right, all right, here we go. Compared to the speed of radio waves, the speed of light. Uh, ooh, got one winner, one winner. Right. Uh, okay, so here, uh, I know there's a graphic up here. It matches this one here, EM spectrum. All right, so there are different categories of this electromagnetic spectrum. Now, these are all uh, electromagnetic waves. Uh, you have uh, oscillating electric and magnetic fields. Okay. They all travel at the speed of light. Uh, radio waves have longer wavelengths. Something closer to gamma rays has a higher frequency, but they all travel at the same speed, right? Same speed, speed of light, three times 10 to the eight meters per second. Uh, hey, which has a longer wavelength, radio wave or, or a visible light wave? Yeah, radio waves, longer wavelength, right? This visible light, you guys know it's like hundreds of nanometers, and then depending on exactly how many, they, this correspond to different colors. Radio waves is usually like a meter or longer. Okay. Okay. One of your quiz questions asks you if you tune in to some FM station, what's the, uh, what's the uh, if you picked A, uh, you may have been thinking of sound waves. Right? Now, sound waves, you guys know, is fundamentally different than all this. Right? Sound wave is a longitudinal wave, a pressure wave that needs a medium like air, for example, to travel through. Boom. After you picking up the points. Oh, I almost gave away this one, which is fundamentally different from the others. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 okay, yeah, you guys pay attention. Because the red, blue, and yellow ones are all di just different parts of the electromagnetic spectrum. Yeah, sound waves, entirely different. We're talking about longitudinal wave, right? like a pressure wave. Uh, any questions about that? All right, you guys are on, oh my God. on. The difference between radio wave and the light wave is? Yeah, wavelength. Right. Maybe I should modify that to say uh, visible light. That's the implication there. But you know what else would have been a good answer choice that's not up there? It would have been what? Wavelength or frequency. Yeah. But they all travel the same speed, right? Three times 10 to the eight meters per second. Different wavelengths, different uh, frequencies. Okay. You guys remember, okay, so, of course, uh, speed equals wavelength times frequency. So wavelength and frequency have inverse relationship with each other. That's a uh, thing. Uh, compared to speed in air, speed of light in water. You 
it, it is slower. Okay, so you guys remember the speed of light three times 10 to the eight meters per second? That's really only true in a vacuum. In uh, air, it's like 99.999%. So it's basically true in air too. Uh, just remember um, index of refraction, it tells you how much uh, light will slow down in a particular material. And that causes refraction. Remember that whole story from last week? Like, why does light bend? Why does it look like a pencil's bent, even though it's not? Okay. Uh, and, and what kicks off that story is that the fact that light does go slower from uh, inside a medium. Uh, can you remember what in index of refraction of water is? Yeah, 1.3. Yeah, yeah, you do remember this. Yeah. Right. So light slows down by about 30% in water, which causes that, kicks off that whole refraction process. Uh, glass is transparent to visible light, but not to. Ooh, hey, nice. A uh, bunch of you guys got this right? because I haven't actually explicitly covered this. So just see how many guys would. But, right? So like that glass window right there. So visible light can go through it, right? Versus these walls, visible light like can't go through. That's why we can't see our neighbors over here. Okay. Uh, but uh, maybe other parts of the spectrum, that's a different story. Like if you tune in your radio or if you're you know, connecting internet, right? you know, that's, those are waves that are traveling through the walls and through the ceiling. Okay. Uh, but are there parts of the spectrum that can't say go through that window in the graph that was up there that's on uh, gives way to yeah uh infrared and ultraviolet so if you're in your car on a bright sunny day uh, you're getting some pretty good uv protection because you're behind uh, that glass yeah clouds All right, so there's another one is that uh, hadn't gone over, so it's curious to see you guys think. But um, hey, let's say uh, you're going to be uh, on the beach one day, day at the beach, we'll be there four or five hours. Uh, should you wear a sunscreen? Well, let's see, it's cloudy out today. It's going to be cloudy all day. Should you still wear a sunscreen? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. Electron vibrates a thousand times per second. That's called a thousand what? Thousand vibrations per second. Yeah, frequency of a thousand hertz. Okay, so you guys remember like one hertz, it's like one beat per second. If you did something like four hertz, At four beats per second, you just bump up to a thousand beats per second. Yeah, that's a thousand hertz. Yeah. Uh, oh, how far is a light second? Ooh, yeah, good critical thinking question there. Uh, so, whenever you see something like light second, light year, uh, that's telling something about a distance, like how far light travels in that time, okay? uh, which is particularly good for astronomical type distances. Okay? Uh, you saw that graphic up there. Um, it's about 1.3 light seconds to the moon. So back in the 70s, when the Apollo missions were going on, right, there was a, a time delay between you know, people on Earth and people on the moon, okay? it's about 1.3 seconds, one, one way. Uh, it takes about eight minutes for light to get to the sun, uh, to, to the Earth from the sun. So there's, uh, Eight light minutes. And then uh, you probably saw uh, Proxima Centauri, the closest uh, star to our solar system, is uh, about four light years away. So if you travel that in the speed of light, it would take four years to get there. Yeah. Oh, and light travels at three times 10 to the eight meters per second. So it'd be, in this case, three times 10 to the eight meters, which is three times 10 to the five uh, kilometers. There you go. You guys got that. Uh, the distance. Light travels in a year is called a light year. Look at that graphic. Yeah, yeah. You guys following that? Nice. One light year, the distance light travels in a year. Ooh. All those points. Uh, oh, colors on a TV screen, your phone screen, laptop screen. What's that? So this is a color addition, right? Hey, 
of it, say you zoom down microscopic on your phone screen. Okay? There are only three different colored bulbs that light up. Uh, actually, this might be one of the upcoming questions, but let's do it now. Uh, do you guys remember what those three colors are? Red, green, and blue. Red, green, and blue. That's the only three bulbs in your phone screen. Okay. Uh, now, if none of them are on at all, what color is your phone screen? Black. Black. Yeah. Uh, and let's say they're all light at the same time. What color is your phone screen? White. Right. right. Okay. This is color addition. Right. The more colors you add, uh, it, you know, every time you turn on another bulb, you're like adding more until it gets to white light. I think, uh, I think it's this one right here. It's just not. Uh, printed photograph, ink printer. If you're painting, what is that called? And color subtraction, that's the opposite process. And so every time you mix more different colored paints together, it gets closer to like a really dark, right? right? So three primary colors you probably learn in maybe elementary school, like red, yellow, blue. That's really only an approximation for like the true color subtraction is uh, magenta, yellow, and cyan. Okay. Uh, so yeah, if you mix those three, you'll get black like that, right? And then every time you add another color, it absorbs more and more uh, light and, you know, until of course it just turns black if you mix them all. Um, when blue and yellow paints are mixed together, the resulting is green because talk about addition or subtraction. Color subtraction, right? Yellow and blue make green because uh, yeah, yeah, you guys honest. Yeah, between blue and yellow, all colors are absorbed except for uh, that green wavelength. Yeah, there you go. Uh, you guys, did you guys happen to notice that uh, the um, intersections of the, I mean, it's sort of like a Venn diagram type sets, right? You guys notice that the intersections between any two of those uh, are the primary colors of the other uh, color mixing type? Okay. You guys notice that? Uh, three primary colors for additive color mixing. Additive. And red, green, and blue. Yeah. So you guys say. Oh, it's on your screen. Uh, difficult to tell a roadway from a car on a rainy night because the road surface. Ooh, all right. So let's just see how you guys are going to take this. Um, so why don't you guys pick the yellow one? Uh, so scatters light in all directions uh, is that's actually what diffuses. So if you look at almost anything in this room, uh, that's uh, diffused reflections, like like this wall, that's you know, like any object you look at. Uh, if there's a light that shines on it, it scatters the photons in all different directions. So you can stand it in perspective, and the object just looks like the object, right? The wall looks like the wall. This computer looks like this computer. Okay. But if there's a mirror, that's a special kind of reflection called spectral reflection. So the light bound follows, you guys remember the law of reflection from last uh, last week? So the angle of incidence equals the angle of re reflection. That's spectral reflection, which is what the road would turn into, like this mirror when it's wet. Yeah. Uh, refraction. Yeah, okay. So why does light bend like that? Remember the what, what started that story, what kickstarted that story was the fact that the wave does change speed. Okay. Uh, now if you pick all the above, so then apply some of these other ones, like like the blue one says only with light waves. Okay. Hey, can sound waves also refract? Yes, right? Uh, for example, you guys remember Paul Hewitt's story? He's saying he was a Boy Scout and he had a camp and then there was another camp on the other side of the lake. Right? Remember that? Uh, two, if you either you're absent or don't remember this. So uh, he was saying during the day, they uh, these two you know, camps of uh, scouts would yell at each other like, hey, how are you doing? They could barely hear each other, okay? 
Uh, but then at night, when there was this temperature inversion, so you had this cool water but this warm layer of air over it, uh, that would cause the sound to refract so that you could be whispering in your tent. And it was really clear, uh, audible uh, on the other su side of the lake uh, when they were saying, hey, if you guys ever um, have come across this, you know, sometimes at night, warm night, you can hear uh, very clearly across water because sound also can refract. Yeah. The change in speed causes it to, uh, to bend, and that's well, refraction. Oh, when you see a, a wet spot mirage on the road, what do you think you're most likely seeing? Okay, so um, you know I, I probably need to go back and change the answer choices here because uh, hot air actually isn't a terribly bad idea, but maybe it's not technically like the image. Okay. Uh, sky. This is an example of refraction too, even though at a glance you might think that you know, looks really reflection, kind of like a mirror, because at a glance it does. Okay? Uh, so this has to do with uh, if, say it's a really hot day outside, like 90 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, but that pavement, that black pavement, asphalt, right, well that's absorbing a lot of light energy, it, that's really hot. Okay? Uh, so the air just above that surface is like way hotter than the surrounding air, so that causes refraction too. That causes uh, light, say, from uh, from the sky to refract upwards and uh, into your uh, eyes as the driver. Yeah, so that's actually an example of refraction. And you're seeing an image of just like the sky and the clouds uh, in front of you. A uh, person stands waist deep in a swimming pool appears to have short legs because of... All right, just go. Refraction. And for Bud and getting points. Uh, the shortest plane, oh, shortest plane mirror, you can see your entire image. Oh, all right. Right, so this one I was going to go over after the hoop, so we, we will. Uh, I'll, I'll show this to you guys with the ray diagram, why this is true, but yeah, a uh, bunch of guys got this. Uh, so for example, if you're six feet tall, um, you need a minimum of three foot mirror to actually see your whole self, as long as you have it positioned in the right position. Uh, I'll show this to you guys after this Kahoot. Yeah, but awesome for getting that, for figuring that out. Uh, oh, let's say you look at yourself in the pocket mirror, then hold the mirror further away. What do you see? Ooh, okay, uh, now why would they answer the same amount of yourself? Uh, tell you guys what, uh, I do have here uh, a mirror, a handheld mirror. On one side, it's a plain mirror. On the other side, it has a slight concavity to it, right, which you guys remember from last week, a uh, cosmetic mirror can like blow up your image. Right? I'm going to pass this around. I want you guys to check this out. Hold it close to your face, hold it further away, and the proportion of your face actually does not change depending on distance. Uh, and actually, you know what, too? This question uh, goes hand in hand with that last question, the fact that you need uh, half your height uh, mirror to see your full self. Notice the last question uh, did not depend on where you were standing relative to the mirror. So yeah, for, for the, uh, the, the reason that that answer was that answer, uh, that goes hand in hand with this one. I'll show you guys that too uh, after this Kahoot. But if you're figuring these out, then yeah, good critical thinking. Uh, reason that lines look wavy, bottom of a swimming pool, Yeah, refraction, different angles, uh, uneven surface. Okay. Uh, let's see. Yeah, why don't you guys pick the blue one? Um, maybe, maybe it's a, a, a tiny effect, but it's not the main effect, right? So if you have like a smooth surface, they might have temperatures that are different, you know, slightly at different levels, but uh, that's not the main effect. So yeah, right. the fact that the surface itself is uneven, right, you'll get different refraction angles. All refracting lenses rely on light having
Ooh, got one winner. So, but why would refraction happen at all? So remember, the beginning of the story has to do with the fact that light actually slows down inside the material, slows down in water, slows down in glass, right, compared to air. Right? Uh, see if, um, huh. Yeah. You know, I, I want to mention something. I, we've got one more Kahoot question. So there's something I want to come back and mention about this one, too. Uh, I used to teach forensic science back in the day, and there's actually a really cool application of refraction and Snell's Law, uh, trying to figure out the next refraction of glass. So uh, hang on to that idea, because um, I want to tell you guys a cool forensic science application of this. Okay. Right, and last question, uh, magnifying glass underwater, how will that magnify compared to the air? There's a hint, index of refraction of air, pretty much one. Glass about 1.5 or so, water is 1.33. So refraction has to do with differences in indices of refraction, right? Uh, okay, most of you guys got that. Yeah, it's not gonna magnify as well, right? Uh, here, let's go to the winner's podium and then I'll flip over and give you guys some, uh, fill in some details on some of these. Right? Uh, this girl gets the bronze. Uh, Bridget picking up the silver. And Kaylee, the gold. You and Olivia, runners up. Yeah, nice job. Yeah, yeah, they're pretty good on that. So yeah, there's a little bit of review there, but also a few critical thinking questions and a couple of trivia questions. So uh, let's take a look at some some of those uh, come up here. Uh, so forensic science application. Let's say. Um, you have a, uh, actually, let's just start from the end and go backwards, right? Because that last question is about a magnifying glass, right? And actually, it's getting stuck leaked into this anyway. Oops. Oops. Okay. So this magnifying glass, okay. So you see that this is, hey, what, what kind of lens is this again? Is this a, uh, a converging or a diverging lens right here? It's causing magnification. You see on this poster here? That's a what? Converging, right? You guys think of converging, right? As this, this type shape to it, right? Okay, so the difference in index of refraction between the air and this glass piece might be like one versus 1.5, for example. But if I take this under the water, uh, where it's like 1.33, those indices of refraction are not as great, right? So is it going to magnify as much? Well, the last clue, the answer was no. What about this? What if, this is about to connect to this forensic science book, what if the index of refraction of this glass, I guess, Different glasses, different indices of refraction. What if it actually was 1.33 and you took this underneath the water that also had the same index of refraction, 1.33? Would this magnify at all? No, it, it wouldn't even work. Okay, uh, okay so that brings us to this. Let's say uh, you're a forensic science investigator one day and you're at some scene and maybe there's some broken glass, you get little tiny shards of glass. And maybe this is like some of the only really good evidence that you have. Only, you could only figure out where this glass came from. Different kinds of glass, different indices of refraction. Huh. How could you maybe quantify, measure like, what the index of refraction is? A little tiny shard of glasses. Well, um, they'll do uh, something kind of like this. Uh, it, 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 it's, it ties back to this example. I was saying if this index of refraction is 1.33 and water is 1.33, it won't magnify at all. Okay? So if you put this uh, mystery piece of glass inside, say, different liquids, or sometimes I've seen um, if you have some oil that you change the temperature, the uh, index of refraction will change some known quantity. Okay? Uh, at the point where those indices of refraction exactly match, guess what it looks like? Guess what that shard of glass looks like inside that liquid? Completely invisible because there would be no refraction at all because there would no, be no speed of light change. Okay? So you would look just straight through, it'd be completely transparent. Right, well, share my screen. Okay. Right, so, uh, yeah, yeah, so it would just be, um, yeah, com completely transparent. It looked like it uh, looked like it disappeared. Even um, let's look at uh, that mirror question because there was a question about uh, how much mirror do you need to see uh, your full height. Yeah, so I'll show you guys with the ray diagram why you only need uh, a mirror with half your height to see your full self. Yeah, so. Got a ground going. Um, let's say here's a mirror, like a dresser mirror. 
and it'll have a guy standing. Oh, well, I don't know. Be like right here. Okay. Now I just created a, an arbitrary distance from the rear. Okay, see that? Okay. I didn't measure out. Should it be really close, really far away? I just put him some distance. Okay. Now he's going to see a, a reflection. Uh, we did some ray diagrams last week, so let me see how far away he is. I've got him about seven and a half centimeters away. Let's go seven and a half centimeters. Give him the same height. I'll draw this image over here. Be like probably something like this. Okay. So we got object and image. Right. Like, like it's a reflection. Okay, so that's for a plane here. All good. Okay. Um, so this is him in the real world. He thinks he sees. Uh, oh, is this called a virtual image or a real image? What do you guys say? The fact that he appears to be on the opposite side of the mirror. That's called a real image. Oh, careful. Okay. Right the, the pig that looked like it was hovering in front of the mirror, that was called a real image. Okay, okay so this one would have to be virtual, right? Virtual. Okay. Uh, let's follow a couple of rays and figure out um, the answer to this question. Okay. So oh, I should give him some, some eyes. Give this guy some eyes right here. This reflection, he's got some eyes. Okay. Let's say with his eyes, he's seeing the top of his head to the bottom of his feet to represent his full height. Okay. Uh, let's follow a, um, a particular light ray that would be entering his eye. So uh, he's looking over here. He's seeing the top of his head here. Now notice I'm dashing it on this side just to say that, well, the light doesn't really cross the plane here, but he's extrapolating backwards in his mind. Okay. Uh, here's the actual light ray. But boing, I mean, his eyes are pretty close to the top of his head. So um, measured from a normal line, it's only a few degrees, except for boing. Okay. That's the actual light ray, but he perceives that as, okay, top of his head would be back here. How about the bottom of it? Um, how about his feet? Okay. So he's looking down in the mirror and he sees his feet down here. So it's following real light. Okay. Now, as mine, extrapolate backward, he perceives it to be in there. But this ray really came from a boing like that. Right? You know, a boing, okay. wall of reflection. Okay. And it perceives, okay, what's it? Okay. Is that? Hey, do you guys see, uh, compared to his height, how much mirror you actually, doesn't he only really need that much mirror to see his entire self? And that be true? You gotta measure these. You gotta measure. What, what's this guy's height? Uh, he looks like, 7.6 centimeters tall, 7.6. Um, what is half of 7.6? I thought this, this is right here, it's pretty close. 7.6 centimeters divided by two. Should be like 3.8. Okay. Let's see how many centimeters in my ray diagram. Uh, this is saying like 4.1, 4.1, that's pretty close to 3.8, right? Okay. Ah, that, that pretty well is it. So this right here, because this is all I need. He only needs a mirror that's like this big. Uh, you guys can try this in real life. No, of course, the catch is it has to be positioned exactly there. Shift up or shift down a little bit, then you won't be able to see its head or his feet. Okay. Uh, you guys can try this yourself. Next time you're uh, nearby a wall that's a large reflective surface. Uh, I know I did this. There was an airport terminal. There was a glass wall. It was night outside, which made a really good reflective surface. Um, stand at some distance from that surface and look and see where is your top of your head, where is the top of your feet in that reflective surface. Uh, and then either... You know, make a mark on the wall, you know, maybe just in your mind say, okay, well, I, I see on the wall, it's that spot and there's a scratch on the wall or something. Right? And then uh, as you walk uh, towards or away from that surface, uh, where the top of your head and bottom of your feet are, don't actually change uh, their, their positions on the wall. So I could have drawn the sky at any position relative to the surface and you still only need half as height to do the full image. Okay. Uh, I've got some other mirror puzzles. So let's take a look at these. Uh, this one is the one we just did. This guy is looking in the mirror. He only needs a mirror that's half of his height to see his full image. Okay, so we did that one. Okay. All right. Here's a good challenge question. Only a few students get this one right. All right. Say she's standing one meter in front of the mirror. Right. So here's one meter in front of the dresser mirror. Okay. And looks at a flower on top of her head um, in a small handheld mirror, a half a meter uh, behind her head. Okay. Uh, let's suppose that this, it's not exactly drawn like this, but uh, let's suppose that this flower is sort of on the back of her head, so she can't see the direct reflection of the dressing mirror. Okay, but she can see this. She can't see the reflection of the reflection. Okay, is that right? Okay, so the flower is reflecting in the handheld and then reflecting in the dresser, and that's what she's looking at. Okay, uh, how far behind the dresser mirror would she see the image of the flower? So starting from here and going back, 
how far before she sees the reflection of the reflection of the flower. Right? You guys are looking for anything though? Okay. Come on. I'm gonna see a show of hands. Um, give you guys some multiple choice options. I'm gonna narrow it down to either one meter, one and a half meter, or two meter. Okay. How many of you guys think behind this dress mirror she sees the reflection of the reflection of the flower? Uh, let's say one meter behind. Who says one meter? Uh, who says one and a half? Okay. And does anybody say two meters back? Two meters. Aha, uh -huh. yeah. I went right here. Uh, so, uh, yeah, Olivia, you're getting this. Because here, Let's let's just uh, one at a time. Um, start looking at this handheld mirror. Right? Wouldn't the original reflection of the flower be half a meter behind the handheld? It should be right here. Okay. So that would be uh, okay. So that'd be like right here, right? Just imagine like a little goose flower. Okay. And then that reflection is being ah. Uh, you guys see it's two meters from the dresser mirror. So its own the, that reflection would be over here two meters. Okay, yes, it. Okay. Uh, ooh. You can see show hands on this one. I hope everybody gets this because we, we were just talking about this. So you guys may have just seen it. I, I passed around that handheld mirror for this reason. Okay. Say she's looking at this handheld mirror. She sees some amount of her face. I can only see 80% of my face. I'd like to see more of my face. Uh, should she hold the mirror closer, further away, or are both of us gonna do no good for her and she just needs a bigger mirror? Those are your options. How many guys say that to see more of her face, she should hold the mirror closer? Who says that? Who says further away? And who says she just needs a bigger mirror? Okay, most of you guys got that, right? That, that's the whole reason I just passed that mirror around, right? Okay. Yeah, the answer is C. Okay. Uh, you guys remember how that goes hand in hand with this right here? Like the proportion that, that this guy can see of himself, or if he wants to see his whole self, he only needs half a mirror regardless of where he's standing. Okay. Or if you guys tried this demo yourself, like hold the mirror closer, further away. Yeah, you just need a bigger mirror. But you don't see different proportion of your face depending on distance. Uh, you know what? Since I got four questions here, let's just finish these out with this one. Okay. So, uh, got this girl here taking a photograph of this bridge with her friend on it. Okay. Uh, you guys see some lines to show where the uh, what, what the picture's going to be in. Okay. And which of these images, image A or image B, more accurately shows the photograph of the bridge and, say, the river underneath it? Okay. Uh, show hands. How many guys say that picture A looks more realistic? Who says that? Uh, who says picture B looks more realistic? Okay, so we got to say this one. Uh, what gives away picture B is, is the answer. And that is the right answer. Your reflection of the shadow. Yeah, the shadow on the underside of the bridge. Like you would see that too. The first one looks like it's just like copy paste, like flipped upside down. But yeah, you, you would actually see uh, the underside of the bridge, wouldn't you? Okay. Uh, any questions on any of this so far? Critical thinking questions there? Uh, okay, Let's see where we're on the list. Right. Oh, uh, you know what? Uh, last week, these Benham wheels, um, I was uh, collecting some leftover ones uh, after the day on Friday, and some of you guys made much better ones than I did. So I just want to, I, I don't know whose this is, but it's spinning way better than the one I made. So give you guys another opportunity to see this. Ah, right. Keep it under the camera. Uh, one more try. Ooh, there we go. That's pretty good. All right. Uh, let's look at uh, some chapter 19 type content. Actually, what I want to do for this is uh, leaf through uh, some Paul Hewitt examples because I like the layout he has in this book. And then we'll uh, go look at uh, your guys' book. Right. So, to, um, I've got this book broken out. Uh, one correction I want to make from uh, last week. Uh, I was telling you guys if you're nearsighted versus farsighted, like what kind of refracting lens would you need? Right. So uh, if you are nearsighted, then it's actually this diffraction lens uh, that makes up your glasses, right? where it's like thinner in the middle and thicker uh, outside. Right? Uh, if you happen to be farsighted, then uh, your glasses probably look more like, like this, uh, this shape, this uh, converging type lens. Uh, OK, got that. All right, so um, diffraction. Now, how can you change the direction of a wave? 
if we there are three main categories and we've covered two of them right you can change the direction of a wave with reflection you could do it with refraction but is there anything besides those two yeah that's this one this is diffraction so this is uh say a wave going around a corner like this uh, or say around an object uh here we've got uh ooh, what's the wavelength compared to the diameter of the object you see how those are going to probably result in different type motion and got some photographs here that actually look a lot like the you guys remember about a week or two back that broke out that ripple tank and you saw stuff like this you guys remember that that ripple tank right so um sort of going backwards here but that's the way i want to present this is um this it can show a uh, huygens principle so say so you have like a single point source where the waves are getting through say like there's like boundary here boundary here and the walls are going the waves run bottom up right Okay, well, these look like pretty circular type pattern, don't they? The sun, right? Here. And then the closer you get to, or the more like, like spread out this opening, ah, see how there's like the straight wave pattern, like going up the middle, like straight waves. Right? And then, okay, then it curves over here. So here's a circle here, here's a circle here. Okay. Right, so what Huygens principle tells you is that uh, it's an interesting perspective on uh, wave propagation uh, that, say, you have some circular wave that's going out, you could think of it sort of like, um each uh individual point is releasing its own individual wave but the uh those waves put together the aggregate effect is that it just keeps uh, sending on a uh, a large wave okay, so you got that um ah uh young's uh interference ex uh, experiment okay so young did this really famous double slit experiment that um okay you guys are going to, uh, uh, we're going to come back and revisit this uh, a few months from now when you do quantum mechanics, because there's actually like uh, an extended tape we can uh, do for this, but, but for now, uh, what does this have to do? Uh, also, you can try this at, uh, at your own desk if you like. Uh, I was going to do this as a class demo, but the way these cameras are oriented, it kind of makes a bad uh, demo here. It's hard to see. But if you ever take a, uh, say, a card of paper, and cut a couple of slits in it and shine a light through like this. Okay? And you hold a certain distance from the uh, background surface, you should be able to see an interference pattern like this, where it goes like bright, dark, bright, dark, bright, dark. Okay? Now, what does that mean? And why is that significant? And what's the deal with it? Right, so uh, the fact that there's an interference pattern, uh, well, you guys remember interference but, uh, back from a few weeks back. Isn't that evidence that you have a wave? Okay? Uh, so if you ever had a question like, is some part of physics fundamentally you know, wave-like or particle-like, uh, then if, if you do an experiment like this, then you get an interference pattern. Interference patterns are examples of uh, waves. Right? So you got, um, here, got a light beam here, light beam here, uh, got waves propagating out. Uh, you got interference. You guys remember interference, kind of constructive and de destructive interference? Okay. Well, if you have uh, waves uh, emerging uh, some distance from each other, then yeah, you've got a pattern, right? constructive interference, destructive, constructive, destructive. Right. Ah, so we've got white dark, white dark, white dark, like that, right? Uh, so there was a question for like hundreds of years in physics. Uh, what is light? Is light fundamentally a particle or is light fundamentally a wave? Uh, and the answer to that question actually is both. Uh, you could think of light being like a particle, like, like consisting of photons, uh, or you could think of it being like uh, uh, existing uh, as a wave. Uh, so when we get to quantum mechanics, we're, we're going to come back to that idea. But this particular experiment uh, was showing the, the wave-like nature of light specifically. If the light would be a wave. Let's get that. Uh, there's right, uh, iridescence. So uh, have you guys ever, say, had a really thin film of, let's say, like cling wrap, something like this? And if, next time you come across this, uh, pay attention. You might see uh, some like, like dark bands, like dark white, dark white, from transparent material. I'm talking about something like cling wrap. Now, why would it have like these dark bands in it? Well, uh, this goes back to interference. Say, if you have uh, light reflecting off some surface behind this and it destructively interferes, that would create these dark type bands. Uh, oh, here's some, here's some pictures of them right here. Uh, how about how about this? Uh, you guys ever wonder why a CD looks like these rainbow type colors, even though obviously there's no like red and blue and green like pigments in the CD, right? Or how about some bird feathers or uh, uh, butterfly feathers. Okay, I'm gonna flip the screen over and show you guys something cool here. It all has to do with iridescence. You bring up the stem of the. Whoops, trying to right holder here. 
today. Ah, there we go. There we go. So, uh, like that blue butterfly right there, uh, it's not blue because it has any blue pigment in its wings. Like, suppose you found a dead butterfly and you like round up its wings, uh, you would no longer have a blue color. So, what, why does it look blue? Where, where's the blue come from? Well, it has to do with this um, iridescent effect uh, that, at a molecular scale, uh, has these ridges that, ah, oh, look at this, the gap between the ridges, so many nanometers, hundreds of nanometers. Hey, that's on, kind of on par with certain wavelengths of light, right? So, whatever light reflects off that, um, you know, if you have a wavelength that reflects off that's um, uh, consistent with, say, like a blue color, right? Really, really short uh, visible spectrum wavelength. Ah, this is so much that, right? Yeah, so um, yeah, a lot of these uh, bird wings, butterfly wings, um, if, if you see them in motion, they uh, seem like shiny, seems like the colors change a little bit. Yeah, it's uh, almost certainly because of this uh, iridescence. Yeah, so that'll be a pause for today. Uh, you guys have a good rest of your Monday. <laughs>